Gallery night included what was for me the unique experience of Temple at Sensorium in the Third Ward. The space is a functioning design firm during the work week, but Niel Hoffman invited artist Nina Bednarski to curate an exhibition that would transform those offices into a place of, quote, heightened connection and perception. Nina brought together a community of 11 artists who presented their vision of Temple, creating altars, shrines, and other sacred objects. In speaking to some of the artists, I understood that much of the work was personal in a way that their art practices usually aren't, and I was touched by their willingness to risk revealing their private beliefs and experiences in this public way. The centerpiece of Temple was a shrine created by Nina Bednarski herself using a tree from her previous home in Lake Mills, where she lived before very recently relocating to River West. The base, or altar of that piece, is a table constructed by her father. A deep, teal-blue skirt sewn by her aunt hides the space beneath that foundation. One-inch mirrored discs hang down from strings on naked limbs of a dead tree. All around its base are crystals and shells and other elements of nature preserved beneath glass bell jars. Both painful reminders and beautiful mementos that she collected on travels with past lovers, enshrined for this piece she calls Heart Center Healing Shrine, where she seems to be half-channeling a creation made to soothe the ache of life's transitions. That room also included four other temple pieces. Photographer Eric Bailey's made The Object of an Image, a piece I consider an altar to art-making itself, as it displays the evidence of a year of labored learning in which the artist not only learned to make tintypes, but studied how to cast vintage cases for their display right down to the tiny hand-tooled brass latches that secure the images they contain. The wood shelf on which the tintypes were displayed was crafted by fellow temple artist Jamie Stanick, reinforcing an atmosphere of collaboration and community among the individuality expressed by the artists. In the same room, Serena Waits installed a beautifully composed metaphysical mantle, a white fireplace, not framing fire as one might expect, but tall, healthy blades of bright green grass bordered by smooth white stones. On top of the mantle, a miniature glass house contains colorful spheres like beach balls next to an inverted stack of shells. The glass house is surrounded by translucent beach glass, Thus, internal and external worlds are blended together in this investigation of what really exists. Next in the room was Faith Levine's untitled mixed-media work. For this exhibition, Faith made six little temple-like papier-mâché structures out of foil, glitter, fabric, and enamel. They are almost bottle-like in form, reflecting an obsession with vessels that hold things within them. In this case, the temples hold small, empty, glittery wombs that some gallery visitors wanted to live inside. This sculptural project was the first of its kind that Faith has made since before she started making films five or six years ago. Opposite her piece was a series of paintings and prints called Wisconsin Animal Healers, with animals in elaborate headdresses painted on glass by Nina Bednarski over a mysterious printed background of wallpaper screen printed by Craig Grabhorn. Grabhorn had another piece in the exhibition in which he created a long media scroll that unfurled into three columns onto the floor. The scrolls depict images from his life's journey in chronological order, beginning with a clear conscience, including some struggles along the way and always with the heart at the center. The screen-printed, painted, drawn, and sewn images subtly allude to complex emotions— Mobiles made of feathers drip in front of the piece, suggesting the fragility of this life. Also in that room was Jamie Stanick's Veneration of Life Exist. Imagine yourself as the viewer sitting across from a mixed-media wood shrine on a pine block bench. If centered on the bench, the small mirror reflects in your right eye. When you contemplate the wood in the piece, you notice your face merging with other faces in the wood grain. The faces are surrounded by other identifiable beings, such as a ram and an insect abiding in wood knots. Birds' nests, feathers, bee combs from the artist's rural Wisconsin property adorn his cross-framed altarpiece. Artist Mark Dewar had two shrines in the exhibition. One was devoted to the artist Frenchy Letandre, his beloved brother-in-law and dear friend who passed away in 2006. 
That piece is centered around a large ceramic Virgin Mary playing an accordion, with dozens of smaller versions of the Virgin also incorporated in the piece. Mary is depicted playing a lament for all human suffering, but there's also a lightness to the accordion-playing mother who hears our earthly music and blesses us in our love of polka. Durer's other altar consists of many little ceramic spirit houses with images of his friends that have passed away. It gives them a little place to reside so that he can go visit them when he needs them. That altar also has a convenient little spirit hotel for unspecified extra spirits. Michael Villiquette's power figures display the first 14 characters of what he intends to be several hundred spirit totems in the next couple of decades. The figures, which are loosely modeled after Kachina dolls, come from a previous piece he created about a fictional race of beings that are composed entirely out of light. These figures are seemingly completely separate from his commercial art practice and reflect the pure joy of making. The small figures are displayed on a shelf like Victorian figurines. I asked some of the artists why they chose to participate in Temple, curiosity driven by the level of personal investment and vulnerability they were willing to make. They told me about their interest in building more community with other artists, and they acknowledged that the space where spirituality and creativity overlap is very charged and personal. Ultimately, what made Temple so special to me is probably the same thing that has made temples special in all cultures in the world since humans started building them. A group of people agreed to make a sacred little place for individuals to process their joys and pain in the company of others, and then they let us all come in. Mm -hmm.